Good morning, River Kids. We are so glad that you have joined with us today. Now, today we are moving on to the next major part in the Bible timeline. So let's have a quick look at what we have already covered. So we started off over here with creation, followed by Adam and Eve, then Cain and Abel. Then we looked at Noah and the flood and the Tower of Babel, followed by Abraham and his son Isaac, and then his kids, Jacob and Esau. Then we moved on to Joseph, and then we spent a couple of weeks talking about Moses. So we talked about his calling, then the 10 plagues. Then we talked about how they escaped and passed through the Red Sea. And today we are still looking at another part of Moses' life. And the part we are focusing on today is the 10 commandments and what they are for. So what are we waiting for? Let's get right on into it. It's game time and today's game is charades. Charades is when one person, that's gonna be me, acts out silent clues, while the others, that's you, guess what I am trying to act out. We are going to do quick fire rounds, which means I'm going to act out as many as possible as I can, while you guys have to try and guess them by yelling out your answers on the screen before the answer pops up on the screen. So try to keep count of how many you get correct. Are you ready? All right. Three, two, one, go. All right, next one. All right, I, I have to do another. All right, next one. Oh, how am I going to do this one? Um, All right, next one. Oh, what's the next one? Oh, okay. Oh, all right, that's it. That was a bit of a workout. Some of them were pretty tricky for me to act out, and I'm sure it was hard for you to guess. Now let's go and find out what our memory verse is for this week. Right, it's time for this week's memory verse, which is from John 14, verse 15. Let's read it all together. If you love me, you'll do the things I command. John 14, verse 15. Now, that's way too easy. I'm going to take away a few words. Let's see if you can still say the whole thing. How'd you do? Still too easy? All right, let's take away a few more words. Wow, you guys are too good. But now, how will you go if we take away a few more? It's definitely a lot trickier, isn't it? Let's take away all the words and see if we can still do it. I am impressed. This memory verse is saying, if you love me, you'll do the things I command. Some of the things God asks us to do is to love others and to forgive people, to help others and to speak kindly. So if you love God, you'll love others even when some people are hard to love. If you love God, you'll forgive others even if you feel like they don't deserve it. The things God asks us to do are to help us become better people and the world a better place. So even if it might be hard to do what we should do to follow God's ways, we do it because He knows what is best for us. Hey, I didn't know you knew sign language. I don't know sign language. What were you doing? I said, hello, how are you? Today is a beautiful day. What were you doing if you weren't doing sign language then? Oh, I was just learning the Ten Commandments. At River Kids, we're learning them, and I want to be really good at it. Can you teach me? Yeah, of course. All right. So one God, no idols. Mm -hmm. Use God's name with respect. Yep. Number four, sleep on the Sabbath. Number five, honor your mother and father. Number six, you shall not murder. Number seven, keep your marriage promises. Number eight, no stealing. Number nine, do not lie. 
And lastly, number 10. Don't be jealous. Okay, let me see if I got this. Mon God. Don't bow down to idols. <laughs> Use God's name and only with respect. Yep. Sleep on the Sabbath. Honor your mother and father. Mm -hmm. Do not murder. Honor your marriage. Do not steal. Do not lie. And do not have jealousy. Well done! You picked that up so fast. Hey, would you like to watch Weber Kids Online with me? I think it's starting soon. Okay, sure. Cool. Well, the lesson's just about to start. Last week, we talked about how the Israelites had to run away from Egypt and God led them with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Then He did a pretty amazing thing with the Red Sea. Do you remember what God did? That's right. He parted the Red Sea so that the Israelites could go across on dry land. And then the water came rushing back in when the Egyptian army tried to follow them. Everybody all around knew that God had done that and had set them free. A little while down the track, the Israelites had been in the desert for three months when God called Moses to go up Mount Sinai. This is where God carved the Ten Commandments into two stone tablets. Not an iPad tablet, they didn't have electricity in those days, but two big flat rocks. How many of the Ten Commandments do you already know? Maybe a couple, maybe all of them. Hmm. Now, some of you seem to know a lot of them, but let's go over them again, just in case you've forgotten some and find out new ones if you don't know all of them. Commandment number one is you shall have no other gods before me. But that's a lot of words. So let's remember it by saying one God. Now, God wants to be first in our hearts. Is there anything more important to you than God? Well, if anything comes before you, before our desire to love and worship God, that's called an idol. Now that leads on to number two, which is no idols. So it's like a little person bowing down to an idol, which isn't good because the Bible tells us not to worship idols. But you might be wondering what an idol is. Well, an idol is anything that takes away our focus off God because God wants our complete attention and affection. And now back in the day, they used to worship statues. But these days, an idol could be as simple as your TV or an iPad or even a game. Now those things aren't bad in themselves, but if they start to take up too much of our time and we choose to do those things instead of reading our Bible or praying or going to church, then they have become idols in our lives. Number three, use God's name with respect. So do not use God's name in wrong ways. The words we say reflect on what's in our heart. So our words must honour God. Number four, rest on the Sabbath. Can't quite show you that one with only one hand. But the Sabbath day was a day that God set aside for the children of Israel to rest and worship in Him. So not only should we rest, but we should think about God. And this is why on Sunday, many families take special time to attend church. And when we are in love with our Lord, we will want to go to church and learn more about Him. As a Christian, we want to continue to gather together, worship and to grow. Number five, respect and obey your parents. Now that means that we should listen to them and do what they say. Do you always keep this commandment? It's a little tricky sometimes, eh? Number six, you shall not murder. Now that's kind of self-explanatory, right? <laughs> Number seven, keep your marriage promises. So this means to be faithful to your husband or your wife. Number eight, you shall not steal. So that means you do not take what is not yours and you take care of those things that belong to others. Number nine, do not lie about other people. Has anyone ever said something or made something up a lie about you? Does that feel bad? Well, we don't want people to feel bad, do we? We want them to be encouraged. Well, then number 10, do not be jealous. We should be happy with what God has given us. We should not look at what someone else has and wish that it was ours. The Ten Commandments show us the perfect way to live. Romans chapter 7, verse 12 says they are holy, just and good. If everyone at school followed the Ten Commandments, do you think that there would be any fights? 
No. What about jealousy? No. What about people being hurt because of lies and rumours? No, there wouldn't be any of that. But there would be happiness, peace, fun and kindness. So would you rather have fights, jealousy, lies and pain or love, honesty, joy and peace? Yeah, me too. It would be really nice to be able to go somewhere and know that people will be nice and you will have fun. God was kind enough to show us the way that we could live in harmony with Him and other people. The Ten Commandments is kind of like a mirror. When we look in the mirror, we can see that we have a smudge on our cheek. Now, this smudge was there even before we looked in the mirror, but now that we know it's there, we need to clean it. Just like the Ten Commandments reveal our sin and mistakes. But the law can only reveal our sin. It can't clean us. You might think, hmm, I told someone that I was going to math class, but actually I didn't go to maths. I just stayed in the toilet that lesson because I didn't want to go. Well, let's see if that was a good thing to do or not. Uh Uh-oh, in the Ten Commandments here, it says, do not lie. Oh, well, now that I know I did something bad, I can't grab this and start scrubbing it off me. That just doesn't work like that. So the commandments make us aware of our sin, but then we have to go to Jesus to ask for forgiveness. And He can make us clean, and then we can try really, really hard not to repeat the same mistakes. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the Ten Commandments, so that we can try our very best to live in a way that loves and encourages others and draws us close to You. We also thank you that even though we always make mistakes, when we turn to you, you always forgive us and wash us clean again. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. All right, it's time for our pop quiz. Let's get straight into the questions. Number one, what was the name of the mountain Moses went up to receive the Ten Commandments? So, Mount Sinai. Number two, name three of the Ten Commandments. And all of them are up on screen, so hopefully you got all three of the ones that you chose were on there. Number three, how are the Ten Commandments? Kind of like a mirror. The Ten Commandments reveal to us our sin and mistakes that we are not even aware of before. Number four, who can wash us clean of our sins? That would be Jesus or God. Thank you for doing the pop quiz. Hopefully you got all the answers correct. I'm going to test you to see how well you remember the different actions for the different commandments and vice versa. So if I say commandment number four, keep the Sabbath, what is the action? Did you do this? If you did, well done. Okay, now I'm going to ask Eva to do an action and you have to tell me which commandment it's for. Off you go, Eva. Oh, what's that one? Did you say number two, no idols? Well done. Okay, how about number 10? What's number 10? That's right, no being jealous, no wanting what other people have. Okay, number one. What's the the action for that one? I kind of did it, didn't I? No other God. Okay, can you choose another one and do the action for it? Ooh, what was that one? Oh, it's number seven, because we were using seven fingers, right? So that one is to keep your marriage promises. Okay, let's do number eight. What's number eight? Ooh, so you've got your eight fingers up and then stealing, but you're not allowed to steal, right? So don't steal. That's the number eight. Do not steal. Okay, number three. What's number three? So what does that mean? That one was to not use God's name in vain, right? To use God's name well. Okay, I'm going to do it really fast. I'm going to say the numbers. You're going to try and do the actions as fast as Eva. Okay, ready? Number three. Number two. Number seven. 
Number nine. No lies. Number three. Oh, I did that one already. Number four. Number one. Four was a sleeping one. Number one, that's right. Number seven. Keep your marriage promises. Number six. Do not murder. Mm -mm -mm. Number nine. No lies. Number eight. No stealing. All right, did you catch up with her? Because she was pretty quick and I was pretty quick as well. If you did, well done. And you can test each other out at your house as well or with your friends. That's all from us this week. Sometimes an easy way to remember something is to turn it into a song or dance. So why don't you try and create your own song or dance about the Ten Commandments? We would love to hear your song and see your dance. So if you want to get in touch, head to the River Kids Facebook page and message me through that. Catch you all next week, River Kids.